Hello there. So uh, we've had a couple more requests for this, so I decided to go ahead and do it. What you got here is the TI Inspire CX CAS. On the right-hand side is a Casio prism. That's what you're probably used to me, hearing me talk about. Just start out in the main menu here. So you can do lots and lots of things with both of these handhelds. These are both really good machines. Um, but I just wanted to set a couple of records straight. There's some um, features that are coming up on the Inspire cast that are brand new, which are features that some are going to claim TI came up with first. But they've actually been available on the Casio for some time. If you don't know, I am a Casio user. I do like the TIs. I think the Inspire cast is a great machine. I think it's a little bit much, but... Uh, let me just show you some of the differences, some side-by-sides here, because people have been asking to see them. So we're going to go ahead and do it. A couple of things that um, bother me. So we're going to the run matrix. Let's do something like uh, square roots. So these both simplify square roots. Square root of 27. All right. Here we'll go square root of 27. Both simplify. Let's do approximations of those. So F to D, approximation, all on the same line here. Let's go back. All right, so now I've got to approximate backwards. I don't think this one goes backwards the same way. So I've got to go into menu. I want to do number approximate to fraction because I don't see another one that'll do it. So there's where I have a problem. All right, so we're taking an irrational number, 3 root 3, coming up with a rational solution. Now, I know it's an approximated fraction with uh, this tolerance, but uh, that kind of bothers me a little bit. So that's one thing. Um, let's go into uh, making some graphs. So I'm going to go menu 5, make some graphs here. I'm going to clear out whatever's there on my prism. Uh, I think I have a couple other ones selected here, so I'll have to delete those. Lots of great colors. Delete that. Let me just go back up. I'm going to graph the same two functions. Well, actually, let's just start with one. Let's just start with uh, x squared minus 3. Just go ahead and draw that one. Uh, let's see, I want to make a graph here, menu, uh, let me escape here, where's my home key, here it is, I want to go down a graph. I'm not doing that on purpose. I just I don't I'm not as comfortable with this one, so please forgive me if I'm not trying to do that on purpose. I really I'm not used to using this. But well, let's go with x squared minus three. There you go. That was very fast. I mean it just flashed it right on there. Alright, let's see what we can do. Let's find some roots. So let's see, graph type new, view, trace, zoom, analyze graph. So we'll analyze the graph. Let's find the uh, zero of the function there. There's one of them. Uh, does it give me the other zero of the function? Oh, I got to do lower bound, okay. So I could do lower and upper bound. Okay, that's a little bit of a problem. I don't want to do that. Uh, G solve roots. Well, I like the wording even better. Here's one of them. I've got the derivative turned on, so I'm getting the extra derivative. But there's a second root. Press execute. I can see them. Drop, drop. All right. Uh, here I don't have that option. Um, again, I it may be there. I don't. I don't believe it is. I think you do have to go left bound, right bound on zeros on just about any, all the different parts of this thing. 
So there's my graph menu there. Um, minimums, maximums, if I've got local mins, local maxes, one button push. Intersections, let's do intersections. Let's hit exit. I'll just type in an X for my second function. Um, Got to add a function of this one. Graph. Oops, give it menu. Let me hit enter here. Uh, let's see. I know there's an easy way to do this. There it is. So I'm adding a second function here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add the x function. y equals x. All right, let's do some analyzing. Let's see if we can find the intersection of those two. Intersection. Oops, I keep hitting the wrong button there. Let me go to intersection. Analyze graph. Go down to intersection. Press enter. There's the first one. Again, I, got, I need lower bound. And then I need upper bound. So let me see if I've got... It's showing me one intersection right away. But I don't know if I can get the other one. Now it's giving me one. And it gives me it gives it to me right away, which is kind of nice. But I want to find the other intersection. So i got to go menu. got to go down. I could just type the number 6 to get in there. So I want to find the intersection, which is 4. Lower bound, let me move this over. Yeah, I could just type in zero. So I need lower and upper bound, so there's my other intersection there, so that's good. And it automatically drops it in, which is nice. Let me graph that one. There's the intersection there, G solve, intersection, there's one, drop it with an enter, go over, drop it with an enter. I've got some X and Ys. Uh, I know I can grab graphs here and I'm moving the intersection points out of the way. I can grab the graph and change it, which is really nice because that does show me some changes in the intersection there. And this is a cast machine, so I would expect that to happen. Uh, this one, I cannot do that. I do have the modify feature that I can do on here that I cannot do. Again, this one has some cast functionality that are really, really nice. This is not a non-cast machine, so it's a little different. But my prism does do some equation solving, similar to cast feature, but it is not going to do the uh, complete algebra of it. It's just going to give you solutions. So if you do solvers or polynomials, it will give you imaginary solutions as well in simplified radical form. So it's a couple of differences. Um, the other thing, the one thing that this prism will do that the, the other one will not do, not until the new operating system, I know they've just added this to the operating system, but uh, my Casio can do X equations. So I'm going to change my type of equation here, so let me delete a couple of the equations here, and I'll show you what I mean. This is a feature that's unique to the Casio. Notice it's an X equals form. I'm going to use my variable y squared plus 2y minus 8. And second one, I'll just go with add on x equals 5. Or you know what? Let's make it smaller so I can see it on the screen because my screens go x equals 2. All right, and then we draw. Uh, zoom out with a minus. Zoom out with a minus again. So there's something I cannot do in my... <clears throat> TI. TI does not have the, the ability currently to do y equals func or functions in terms of y, so I cannot do x equals functions of any sort. I cannot do x equals a number. I cannot do x equals a function. I can just do y equals functions. This is a feature that's coming out soon in their 3.2 operating system, but currently none of the TIs will do what this can do. Um, and it's just not a 
Prism unique feature. Um, there is a $44 or $45 calculator that Casio makes, the 9750, that will do X equals a number. The 9860, which is the next model up, will do X equals functions in terms of Y. So there are some functions that are Casio functions that TI does not currently do, but it will eventually do. I want to set the record straight because I think people are going to be saying, hey, Casio copied off of you. That's really not the case. Um, there are other calculators besides the Casio that will do X equals functions besides that. But just so you know, there's one of them. Can this Casio or the TI Inspire CX do some things that Casio can do? Sure. I just showed you a couple of them. It can do uh, does some great stuff with uh, computer algebra systems that this model of the Casio won't do, but there is a model of the Casio that you can do this kind of thing with. You can do it on the ClassPad 330. So, I mean, there are some features out there, but right now everybody wants to compare the CX CAS or the CX with the Prism. So I'm just telling you that these are some of the differences. So let me go back into my home screen. Uh, you can do some, uh, it's got some great features with the CAS. You can do some CAS in the spreadsheet, but the Casio also has a spreadsheet. So we've, we both have spreadsheets. Again, this one you can do, the Inspire can do some computer algebra stuff with it, but then, then again, the Prism is not a computer algebra system calculator. Let's see what else. You can import pictures, any picture, into the CX CAS, not restricted by the teacher, not restricted by anybody. So you take a picture of an exam, you can actually put the, the actual exam in here. You take some inappropriate pictures uh, from the internet, you can put those right on your screen on your CAS. You cannot do that on the Casio. The Casio limits it to teachers. It limits it to the emulator. You cannot put it on the actual physical calculator. That's not something that's true on the Inspire. There is a geometry. We have geometry available on the Casio. There's my geometry. So they both have geometry features. Um, graphing, we've got um, science, periodic tables, we've got periodic table on the prism. It's called the physium. It's also got some phys some constants and things like that. Looks very familiar if you've seen the uh, iPad version of something like this where it includes a high nice high resolution picture along with some examples. I know the Inspire also has some of those same same features out there available. Um, there is a statistics that you can do. We have a statistics on that one so there are some things that they both can do very very well. They're obviously both very nice calculators. Again just some things about this one I'm not as comfortable with as I am with the Casio. So just some quick, what can one do compared to the other? This is, that was a, just a quick and dirty, this is what it can do. It can graph conics. The uh, TI cannot graph conics. Not the easy way anyway. You can graph them, but you've got to do a lot of solving in order to be able to do that. You can't just draw them quickly. You can't just generate them. You do have to do some work to get them to come up. You have to solve for Y's and things like that, do pluses and minuses. That is another feature that's coming out very soon on the uh, CX three, version 3.2, I believe it's called, that I just saw recently. It's on their website. It's not available yet, but that's something that they are, for lack of a better word, catching up with some of the other companies that already do some of these features. Again, these are things that you can do with the Prism currently that you cannot do with the TI. 
So, I mean, it's up to you. If you're a TI person, great. There's room for everybody. But uh, this is just not my cup of tea. I love my 83. I love my 84. But um, I just cannot keep up with this one. So, there's just some quick and dirty things. Some of the things that we can and can't do with either one of the two machines. Um, if you've got specifics that you would like to see, let me know and I'll brush up my skills on it and do some more comparisons. But uh, for my money, for my $100, I'm going with the Casio versus 150 160 for the Inspire Cast. I just don't see it yet. And if they eventually come out with a Cas version of the Casio Prism, uh, one can dream. I mean, it, it would be amazing. So keep those requests coming. I know I'm going to get lots of comments on yeah buts, but uh, that's just the quick and dirty. Thanks.